1899 saw the commencement of the Second Boer War in South Africa. The British forces were built up substantially during this action, which finished in 1902. At the end of the, the war, the British Army, the largest ever field, fielded up to that time, had to be brought back to Great Britain. The 300-year-old Corps of Royal Engineers had played a major part in helping the army in South Africa live, move and fight. And during this work, they had operated the railways and also maintained them in order to service the army in the field. And a special, new special railway company was set up, 53 Railway Company, to enable this to happen. Their arrival had been anticipated and a number of new hutted camps had been built in various places around the country. One of these camps of 168 huts was near Liphook in Hampshire. For various reasons it was decided that uh, the site wasn't entirely suitable, some of it related to the drainage, so it was felt that about half of the huts should be removed from what was called Longmore Camp to Borden Camp about four and a half miles to the north. In order to do this, the huts either had to be dismantled completely and rebuilt on the new site or transported bodily from Longmore to Borden. 53 Railway Engineering Company was drafted in to look at this problem. The solution that the civil engineers working within the Royal Engineers came up with was that each hut should be moved bodily from Longmore to Borden. The distance to be covered was about four and a half miles across sandy, lightly wooded heathland. It was felt that a narrow gauge railway should be used. The reason the narrow gauge was chosen was it was easy to build. It could be built by hand without any cranes or mechanical equipment, all, all lightweight tracks. It could be laid directly onto the ground with just a bit of packing here and there under the sleepers where it was necessary and it could easily be removed afterwards of course because it wasn't required to be there permanently. Each hut would be lifted and placed onto a set of trolleys, seven sets to each side of the hut and the hut 70 feet long and they were 21 feet wide and each hut weighed about 35 tonnes so it was quite a substantial mass to be moved. This was clearly a complex task. If you can imagine picking up your own home and put it, putting it onto the back of a lorry and having it driven down the road four and a half miles, what happened was that this process was repeated 68 times, but instead of using a, a lorry, we were using a railway. The main fixed link stayed in position, the main four and a half miles, but a little section of railway had to be built to get the hut from its position to, onto the main rail track and then when it arrived at Borden a small section of railway then had to be built to move the hut from the end of the track into what would be its fixed position in the future. The movement of the huts wasn't entirely without mishap. Despite their best efforts one of the huts fell off its trolleys during transit and it was abandoned on the side of the road and was used later as a police hut. On at least one occasion, when the contraptions were being returned from Borden back to Longmore to pick up the next set of huts, the two of the contraptions collided with uh, some resultant damage which had to be repaired. These mishaps were relatively minor. Overall, as a civil engineering project, this was a great success uh, and it was probably the first time that uh, narrow gauge railway, or indeed railways that at all had been used to move buildings bodily from one point to another. Longmore Camp itself went on to become the home of the Longmore Military Railway, used to provide training to the sappers, or engineers, in the use of railways and also in the construction of railways. These skills were ultimately put to the test during the First World War when the Royal Engineers working in, on the Western Front mainly built both standard and narrow gauge railways to provide supplies to the army in the field. The Corps of Royal Engineers might best be described as the civil engineers to the armed forces. 
wherever these types of skills are needed by the army, not just in the field, but also in uh, following natural disasters such as hurricanes, and clearly those working within the Royal Engineers, who are often shipped in after such events, can develop their skills at improvising solutions to major infrastructure problems after disasters and it really is a very good career to become involved in.